Hi, this is a response video to Matt Easton of School of Gladiatoria regarding a recent video he made about Toll Wars, which I'll provide a link to in the description below. No real contentions with anything he said. I don't know all that much about Toll Wars, but I do have a few speculatory thoughts I wanted to add for consideration. So, firstly, a couple things out of the way. Um, I am a little messy from doing a little crafting earlier and I haven't been able to find my safety goggles so I'm wearing these glasses my mother got me for Christmas. I know they look a little weird on camera but they are strong enough to do the trick. Also this is not a doll. This is paper mache. I did not have one so I decided to make one. It does have these typical domes, a rolled edge, and of course its straps pulled together which create the tension needed to hold it like a handle. I think it might be a little small but gives me what I think will suffice as a prop. For this video. I do have these other shields but they just don't work the same way and I, I feel like I need something that works similar to an actual doll in order to see if what I'm thinking about actually has any merit to it. So firstly Matt was saying that he didn't have a polar that had a pointed end on it. I'm not sure if that counts, but I think this is along the lines of what he wanted to show with that. So, so there's a close look at what that looks like. Now on how these might be used together, I know in a previous video that Matt has said with a small guard, you'd want to keep it very far back and like a normal buckler you'd want to keep this out probably past i would think the line of wherever your toes are but i've also seen some sword and buckler technique that has them working together and that got me thinking well maybe all that little spike is all you need to put some extra oomph into a hit if you look, that's still enough to hook a finger around. So I'm thinking, even though some come way out to here, it might not necessarily take that much to take advantage of an extra handhold. Just like a tang of a blade doesn't always go all the way down in the handle, but still holds, holds strong, a little spike like that doesn't necessarily need to go all the way down into your fist to hold strong. When we look at how the doll is held, a finger can, it's still free to wrap up around a piece there while keeping the hand mostly protected. So this could be moved together. Stop an incoming blow, throw that blow down, which these nodules and the turned rim would probably help with, and as you throw it down, hooking this little piece really bring in a strike like that. I could see that working. Another thought that I had on this is that I've seen the Toll War stuffed in a sash or belt pretty much upright like this. But I've never really seen one that had a, a full-on belt or a chain or a real fancy hookup to where the, the scabbard necessarily has to stay at the hip. It looks like they can be easily removed if need be. And I'm thinking if you grab a doll and then grab the scabbard and you pull out the whole thing and withdraw the sword, well you have something right down there that can be used to knock a blade out of the way while still allowing you to use this. Let's say I put this leg too far out 
and they decided they wanted to try to cut this leg and they went for that, I could deflect with this and cut with this in virtually one motion. If you did hold the scabbard behind the doll, which I know they'll sometimes hold a dagger behind the doll, you would have to hold the top of it high enough up that when you replace the blade, the lingettes don't slam against the rim or clamp down onto it.